There is no person that God cannot save. There is no promise that God will not keep. There is nothing that our God cannot do. Turn in your Bibles to Joshua, the first chapter in your Old Testament. If you are familiar with your Bible, you know that there are two Testaments, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen. And the Old Testament is a preparation for all that God revealed in the New Testament in Christ. All of it is alive. This is the living Word of God. Maybe you're thinking, why in a new year would we go to an Old Testament? A lot of people think the Old Testament is, well, old. <laughs> but what we're going to see in the messages from Joshua is, while there are two Testaments, old and new, there is one story, and it is the story of our victory in Jesus. Amen. It is the story of salvation, redemption, and restoration. The Bible is the Jesus book. So what we're going to find in the story of Joshua, the children of Israel, as they move into the promised land, out of the desert, and into the land of promise that God had provided, what we're going to discover is that the promised land is really about a promised life. It is the promised life that we have in Christ, all of it. And the theme of the book of Joshua is victorious Christian living. Don't you want to live a victorious life? No longer a victim to the circumstances of life, but victor in Christ over anything that comes your way. And I know as we look to the future, there's a lot of uncertainty and there's a lot of pessimism today. But I believe we as Christians should be the most optimistic, faith-filled people in all the world. Because God has given us a promise, and that promise is secure in Christ. And we are standing on this promise, but we're also stepping in to this promise. It's all about God's people moving forward and living this life that God has given us in Christ. Joshua, the Lord Jesus Christ, is leading us on and leading us forward in life. And God wants you to pursue this life of liberty, this life of freedom, this life of fruitfulness, this life of fulfillment. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And that could also be translated a life that is rich and full, prosperous, because God has given us a life beyond our imagination. What does the Scripture say? That God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more. I am believing God for more in my life and in the life of our church. I want more love, more joy, more peace. I want to pray more and love more and give more and serve more. I want to witness more. I want uh, to grow more. I want to be more and more like Jesus. There is much, much more for you and me, and that's the theme, going forward with our lives, entering and experiencing and then expressing this beautiful, wonderful life in Christ. So let's begin reading in Joshua chapter 1 and verse one, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, not the son of N-O-N-E, but the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. You see, Moses was dead, but the mission was very much alive. Now, therefore, go arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. Do you see the tense of the verb there? I have, not I will give to you, I want to give to you. No, I 
have given you. It's already done. The victory is already won, just as I promised to Moses. And from the wilderness, and if you wonder who owns the land that is given to Israel and where it extends, you can see it here. The people of Israel have been given from the wilderness and this Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites of the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory, all of it. And verse 5, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Amen. God is faithful. He will not leave you or forsake you. So be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to the fathers to give them. God stakes his very character upon this promise. I have sworn to your fathers, I am promising you that what I have given you will come to pass. And what was true for Joshua and the children of Israel because of our Yeshua, Joshua, is true for us. Now, a little background is in order, of course. So I want to give you a short version of the background. It comes from the book of Exodus, and it tells us that the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years until God brought them out. He raised up a deliverer, the great leader, probably the greatest leader in all of history, Moses. And Moses, through the miraculous hand of God, the miracles that took place in the land of Egypt, the miracles that took place on their way out, they came out under the blood as the Passover lamb was first slain in Egypt, and they put the blood on the doorpost here and here and here. Does that remind you of anything? The blood here, the blood here, the blood here. It reminds me of the crown of thorns, the blood upon the face of our Lord Jesus, upon his hands as he was crucified, nailed to a cross for us, the Lamb of God. They came out because of the Lamb. They came out of uh, bondage into liberty, into the life that God, moving forward to the life that God had promised them. Uh, God uh, brought them through the Red Sea. He parted the Red Sea, and he led them uh, forward toward the promised land. It was a, it was a short 11-mile or 11-day journey from Egypt to the land of promise. And so they are on their way until something happened. Though they were led and fed by the hand and faithfulness of God, they had the ultimate GPS system. They were led by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. And yet, and yet, as they neared the land of blessing, the land that God had given them, they rebelled against God. And in unbelief, they turned away. And as a result of their unbelief, even though they had come out of Egypt, even though God had said, go and take the land, they spend the next 40 years, a generation, dying in the wilderness, dwelling in the desert, walking around. They were stuck. They were stalemated in the wilderness because of their unbelief. And while they had come out of Egypt, they'd come, in effect, out of the world because Egypt is a picture of the world, Pharaoh a picture of the devil. And they'd come out of Egypt under the blood, through the power of God, the miracle-working power and hand of God. Though they had come out, they did not go in because of their unbelief. And so they spent all these years, a generation, dying in the desert, murmuring and complaining, though God sustained them, with miraculous manna from heaven, wonderful miracles along the way because they were breaking God's laws and because they were not entering into the promise that he had given them by faith, they were in the wilderness. It was fear that kept them there because they felt that they could not take the land and they did not believe God. They came out of bondage 
but they never experienced these who died. The blessing and the benefit and the bounty of the land of promise, the land that God had given to them. Now, let's get the illustration straight. The promised land is not heaven. I know in some of our great old hymns we sing about heaven and I am bound for the promised land and, and on Canaan's fair and happy shore. And it, these hymns sometimes speak of, of Canaan and the promised land as being heaven. But the promised land in the Bible is not heaven. There were battles to fight and victories yet to be won. There were giants in the land, opposition in the land. And so God said, go and take this land. I love the theme of the Texas Rangers playoff run. You know they won the World Series. <laughs> and their theme was, you know what it was? Go and take it. And they took it. And God is saying to his children in every generation, look, he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Moses, because of his own failure, died in the desert and was buried in an unknown grave. And all this generation, the parents and the grandparents of the generation now standing at the brink of the blessing, standing at the border of the promised land, they all died out because they could not, they would not believe God. And they would not go forward. Too many Christians have come out of Egypt, out of the world, and are yet living for the world. They've gotten out of Egypt, but Egypt hasn't gotten out of them. And so too many are desert dwellers, dwellers wilderness wanderers. They're stuck in the middle. They're saggy. They are stuck in the desert rather than embracing and experiencing the fullness of the promise of God because the, the promised land was a land flowing with milk and honey and beautiful grapes. Perhaps you've seen the symbol of tourism in Egypt. It's Joshua and Caleb, the two faithful spies. Joshua, the very man that we meet here in the Scripture by uh, bearing uh, the grapes of Eskol, and those grapes were so heavy they had to carry it on a pole. So this land was, was flowing with milk and honey. It was bountiful. It was, it was beautiful. It was wonderful. And this speaks of the promised life that God has for you and me, that it is an abundant life, a fulfilling life, a fruitful life. And therefore, we're to take it. But everything in the Bible that I read is always moving forward. It is onward and upward. The Apostle Paul put it this way in Philippians chapter 3. He said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are before, I press on towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. We're pressing on, and he has, therefore, all of our tomorrows as well as this day. Just as he has been faithful to us in the past, he is faithful to us to the finish. And the promises of God are not just for Joshua and the children of Israel way back then, but they are for you and me, a generation, a new generation moving forward into the future. What this message series in Joshua is going to be about is making the rest of your life. Hebrews tells us in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament that this promised land is a land of rest. And in this land of rest, the rest of your life will be the best of your life. And I know that sounds like a cliche, and in some ways it is, but it's true for the Christian that the rest of your life, wherever you are, whatever stage, whatever age, whatever season you are in your life, the best is yet for the people of God. And that's what God is saying to Joshua here in this very first verse. He's saying, 
Moses is dead. That's all done. The past is past. But now it's time to go forward. It's time to move. And because of Jesus, dear people, your future is so much better and so much brighter than you can possibly imagine. You were made for more. Did you know that? You are made for more. Much more in your life. More joy and more understanding and more effectiveness in our witnessing, more strength and energy. There's no reason to fear the future. God will enable you to courageously conquer and defeat every enemy that is in front of you. So, with all that said, by way of introduction, how do we live in this victory? Number one, you, you must see it. You must see the victory that is in front of you. That's what God was doing for Joshua so that Joshua could help the children of Israel to see it as well. He said, this land that I have given you, go and take it. It's yours for the taking. It's right in front of you. Go forward. He didn't say, I will give it to you. I want to give it to you. He said, go and claim your Canaan today. Go and take it now. Put your foot down. He said, every place that the sole of your foot, the bottom of your feet shall touch is already yours. I know we are to stand in faith and be steadfast in faith and stand on the promises of God, and we do. But there comes a time that we need to step into the promises of God. There's a time in which we stop standing and we start moving. And all of this is available to us in Christ. All of these blessings you're going to find as we work our way, journey with Joshua through his book, General Joshua's Journal, if you will. You're going to discover that it is akin to the book of Ephesians in the New Testament. What Joshua is in the Old Testament, Ephesians is in the New Testament, and I say that because Ephesians begins in Ephesians 1, 3 with the bounty of all the blessings. It says in verse 3 that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Amen. Not that he has or will when we get there, but already, all done. I have given this to you. 1 Peter 1, 3 says that he has given us everything that we need, all things pertaining to life and godliness. All things are yours. The victory is yours. And what you need to do today first is to see it. It is the vision of God for our lives. To see it. To see this victory that we have in Jesus and to see it we see it through the lens of Scripture. We see it as we come to the foot of the cross because our victory, all this is true because the victory was gained and won and given to us at the cross. When Christ died and rose again, Jesus won the victory for you and me. We know because of our victory in Jesus that we can not only see that victory, but we can seize that victory. And that's point number two, if you're taking notes, that we are to seize the victory. Why? Because 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We don't live in Egypt anymore. We're not bound. We're not dwelling in the desert. We're coming out. We're moving on. We're taking what God has already given us. Amen. And we do it by faith because we know that we can trust in God. The same God, we sang it, the same God who performed miracles in yesteryear is alive and well today. Do you believe that? Yes. 
There is no person that God cannot save. There is no promise that God will not keep. There is no problem that God will not solve. There is no mountain that God cannot move. There is no valley so deep that God cannot cover. There is no addict that God cannot redeem. There is no home or family that is broken that God cannot restore. There is no church that God cannot revive. There is nothing that our God cannot do. So that's why in Romans 8, verse 37, Paul is thinking about talking about all the things that come against us in this life. And he said, what could destroy us? What could take us out? Life or death or angels or principalities or demons or powers? No. No. For in all these things, we are more than conquerors Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not just conquerors, more than super conquerors, supra conquerors in Jesus Christ. And if God be for us, who can be against us? That's the mindset. If you're living in the desert, you see the obstacles, you see the circumstances, and you live in the desert, you stay in the desert, you just die in the desert. But if you see what God has promised all of us in Christ, and then you step out and you seize it because the victory has already been won. That's what we're going to be talking about over the next uh, weeks in this series. How in this victory we are claiming our Canaan because his presence, his promise is with us. We are more than conquerors. There's more victory to be won in Jesus. Amen. There's much more. And when it says we're more, more than conquerors, it's not like winning in the last second with a field goal or, you know, an overturned call over a substitution. It's not winning like that. It's dominating. Dominating. We don't just barely win. We win big time. We win it all. And that's why God says not only are you to say it or seize it and see it, but one last thing, you are to say it. Declare your victory in Christ. Speak it. You know what happened to those children of Israel in the desert? They were speaking defeat. They were murmuring and complaining and gossiping and whining and, and just looking at their circumstances and dying, and they never experienced the fullness and the freshness and the fulfillment of the land of promise. And too many today, just like that, you've got a negative mindset. You're just murmuring and complaining and criticizing. You've got a mindset that is toxic to yourself and everybody around you. It's death. But when you walk into the victory <coughs> that you have in Jesus Christ, your mind changes. It's called repentance. And when you repent and receive what God has given you, then you seize and see and you say it. You declare uh, your victory in Christ. They overcame him, the devil, by the word of their testimony. And when we speak the life of God, when we speak the word of God, when we speak the promises of God, then we live in the promises of God. So say it. Say it out loud. I will bless the Lord with all ti- all, at all times. His praise will continually be what? In my mouth. I shall Make my boast in the Lord. The humble will hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and come. Let us exalt his name together. Say his name. It is the name of our God. And what we're going to be doing as a church going forward is we're going to keep exalting the name of Jesus. 
We're going to keep preaching the name of Jesus. We're going to keep sharing the name of Jesus. We're going to say the name and claim and seize our victory in Christ. And when you start declaring your victory in Jesus, you win. Satan cannot stand all the enemies. Look, when the children of Israel went into the promised land, there were battles to fall, walls to fall down, more victories to be won, and that's what I'm praying God will do in me and you in the days ahead, that there would be more, much more. But you have to see it. Do you have a vision of victory for your life? A victory of his presence, a victory of his power and his promise. Do you seize it? Take what God has given you. Trust what God will do for you if you will step into the promises of God upon your life. Because everywhere you walk, everywhere you go, you are walking in his word, walking in his will, walking and living in his victory. So say it. Stop confessing your defeat and looking at your circumstances, but start living in the promise that God has given to each one of us, the victory that we have in Jesus.